Highland uh, sent 180 men from a population of 800 in Highland Township. When that many men leave an area, they leave the wives, the children, to take care of the farms and fend for themselves. Um, that's a lot of responsibility put on the families. <clears throat> and they, they had to step up to it. There were no social programs, social welfare programs at the time. You just neighbor helped neighbor. That was it. So these men left, and in the same in Melford. Melford was a little larger community, and I really don't have an exact count, but I know there were over 300 men either from this area or close by that uh, were signed up and volunteered to go to the Civil War. And at that time, they called it the American Army. Melford and Highland at this time, we were not in the war. We'd, they had just gotten asked to send troops. So these men were, a lot of them were really excited about going to war, a lot of the young boys. The older men, I have not been able to believe, were lying about their age to sign up and volunteer to go to war. So there was in this area general ex excitement. They were very much against slavery. When Michigan was formed as a state, their first constitution um, did not allow slavery in the state. And I think it's one of the few, if any other, states that was originally written into their constitution their slavery would not be allowed. And there's so many stories about the men from this area. We've been researching at Oak Grove Cemetery, and there's story after story we found about the lives of these men, and it was really interesting. Several of us have gotten together and formed the Huron Valley Civil War Sesquicentennial Commemoration. And we want to provide the area, and anybody from anywhere would like to come to our event. It's June 25th and 26th this year, and we have educational materials. We have displays, demonstrations. There's going to be a, a real wedding. The bride will wear a Civil War wedding gown that's being made special for her. There's the 5th Michigan Regimental Band. We, President and Mrs. Lincoln will be there. The cemeteries in Highland and Melford will be open for tours. And just so many things going on. It would be really nice if everyone could come. Also, for the month of June, the Melford Library will have on display silk screens done by Jacob Lawrence. He's a famous black of African-American artist. And this display shows the um, abolitionist John Brown in his journey. It was very interesting, beautiful silk screens. Right here at Mary Jackson's house, the Melford Historical Society is going to have an ice cream social, so they'll have goodies. And Mary Todd Lincoln will be here discussing her life, uh, fashions of the day. There'll be a small fashion show. What we're trying to do here in Melford and Highland is recreate the flavor of the area at that time period. But this and is Dakota Starr, and he is a reenactor that portrays Custer. And he and his uh, group will be at the park. And maybe you'd like to tell us your organization's name? Uh, well, I'm the founder and director of the Grand Blank Living Historian Society, which is a group that primarily does reenactments. And um, at the Milford event, we plan on having a recruiting station set up uh, that would have been correct for the Civil War and doing drills and public drills, bringing the public in to drill them and marching around, firing off the muskets and having a camp set up. So it'd be really interesting. It'd be a lot of fun. <coughs> We can have uh, the kids, young adults. Yeah, we're going to throw them in uniform, and we're going to march them with the regular troops yeah. and drill them like mm -hmm. they would have drilled them in the Civil War era. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, and they, they do a great job. Thank so you. It's nice to have them. Custer was 
uh, not born in Michigan, but he moved to Michigan when he was 16 and always called Monroe, Michigan his home. And shortly after he moved to Michigan, his whole family moved up here. Uh, in 1863, when he was a promoted to Brigadier General, he took command of the Michigan Cavalry Brigade, which was all Michigan uh, regiments, and he always considered Michigan his actual home. And so he's uh, considered mi one of Michigan's heroes of the Civil War. He was involved in several battles throughout the Civil War. Yep, he in was um, in the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, right. When Lee was in Appomattox, Lee, uh, Custer was actually the one who forced Lee to surrender. He closed off the last mm -hmm. of the gaps. He was in the first major battle. He was uh, actually one of the first officers to be in a hot air balloon at the Battle of Antietam to go up and uh, check out the sites and stuff mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> he was the youngest general in U.S. history at only 23, so he's a major player in uh, most of the parts in the Civil yeah. War. Very major. When you read it in a book, mm -hmm. it's different than if you actually, you know, go and find out, you know, everything from the uniforms mm -hmm. to how they eat yeah. to how they acted and stuff, you know. Uh, just like not very many people know exactly, yeah, you know, you were given what was called hardtack, but not very many soldiers were given that. You had to forage. And the hats like this, the cappies, where the front was made longer and called a forage hat, so that way if a soldier was walking around and found an apple, he could pick it up and stick it in his hat for later. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize how heavy the guns were. You know, you, someone just picks it up and they don't realize it's, you know, 14 pounds <laughs> added on to the 80 that they have to carry with them already. So it's a lot, you know, lots of people just find out new things. And when you're uh, doing a first-person impression like I do with Custer, not people, many people know that he had his hair cinnamon scented or that he carried a toothbrush around with him everywhere. So you always, you know, the spectators are always learning something new about uh, the war and about the certain people in it and about general life in the war.